Okay, so let's, let's actually apply the normal model to a situation. So we're returning here to the heights of American women. So the heights of American women are approximately normal with, uh, a, standard, with a mean of 64.5 inches and um, a standard deviation of 2.5 inches. And so then we're asked, find the percentage of women who are shorter than 66 inches. So um, I'm going to just introduce some notation that you can use. So like if, let's just let's just use this variable x to represent the height of some woman in this population. What we're trying to find essentially is the percentage of women who have a height that's less than 66 inches. Okay, that's what we're trying to find. So we draw a picture. We put our mean in the middle. So the mean height for all women, 64 and a half inches. Now 65 or 66 inches is over here. It's to the right of the mean. So I would you don't really need to worry about these tick marks. You just need to make sure you're on the right side. Let's just say 66 inches is like roughly here. We are trying to find so since it says we want the percentage of women who are shorter than 66 inches, we're looking for this area. That will correspond to the right percentage. Okay, so the way you do this is we use the calculator. The calculator has a built-in normal model that'll get us this area as long as we punch in the right things. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the z-score, the z-score that goes with 66 inches. In other words, how many standard deviations above the mean is 66 inches? So to find our z-score, as we learned, we take the data value, we subtract the mean, and we divide by the standard deviation, which is 2.5. And when you do that on the calculator, you get 2.5. Okay, so such a such woman such a woman is 0.6 standard deviations above the mean. Okay, now we're going to use the calculator to find to find the the percentage of women whose height is 6, 0.6 standard deviations above the mean or smaller. So we have to take out our calculator and we have to hit the buttons um, second. We're going to go to, we're going to hit the variables button to get us the distributions. And we're going to scroll down till number two where it says normal CDF. Okay, so we're going to hit enter. So normal CDF. Now what we need to punch in is um, we need to punch in a number that corresponds to the left side of this red area. Now since in theory, this model goes all the way up to negative infinity here. We need to punch in something that stands for negative infinity. Now, we, there's no button for that, so we're just going to use a really big number, negative 100. That'll always be good enough. So I put negative 100, comma, and then I put the 0.6 for standard deviations. And now the calculator understands that we're trying to find the area from negative, from the left tail all the way to 0.6 standard deviations. And we get 0.726. So the answer to this, by the way, I'm going to write this in parentheses. You don't have to write this, but the percentage of women whose height is less than 66 inches is the same as the percentage in general is the per is the same as the pro the percentage of z scores that are less than 0.6. Okay, those are those are identical. But in any case, we'll write our final answer as uh, 72 point or point 0.726. Now, I didn't write it as a percentage, but let's just answer the question now. So, find the percentage of women who are shorter than 66 inches. We're going to say about 72.6% of women are shorter 
than 66 inches. Okay, that's what this t model tells us. And again, we utilize the model, right? This is built into the calculator. I mean, this is just so much more convenient than using a histogram and counting up the bars and dividing by the total, which we can't really even do anyway. We're utilizing the fact that the normal model does a great job of, um, of approximating such histograms, okay, as, as long as they're normally distributed. So the, I defined a variable, I wrote a statement, I used the calc, oh, I found the z-score, and used the calculator after drawing a picture to determine the answer. Okay, so this is what you would write as your final answer. Let's do another example here. Again, involving the height of American women. The heights of American women are approximately normal with uh, a mean of 64 and a half inches and a standard deviation of two and a half inches. Find the percentage of women who are taller than 70.5 inches. So as usual, we're gonna put our mean at the center of our diagram, 64 and a half inches. 70.5 inches, again, is over here on the right. So 70.5, again, it doesn't matter so much that it's scaled right. You just need to put it on the right side. Now, since it, we want the percentage of women who are taller than 70.5 inches, we're, we're really finding the area to the right of that vertical line. We're trying to find that percentage. Okay, so I'm gonna just carry over the variables I defined before. So again, we let x equal the height Okay, the height of women from this population. We're interested in the percentage of women whose height is greater than 70.5. So we find the z-score. So we take 70.5 minus our mean and divide by our standard deviation to get our z-score. And when you do this, you get Two point four. Okay, so the percentage of women whose height is greater than seventy point five inches is the same as the percentage of z scores that are bigger than two point four. Okay, that that's optional to write down. I'm just kind of trying to remind you of what that what, that these two things mean the same thing. So we take out our calculator. As usual, we hit second variables, go to normal CDF. Now this time, we want to put the z-score that goes with 70.5 first, because if you look at the diagram, that number comes first from left to right. right? The z-score that goes with 70.5 is 2.4. That comes first. And we're basically getting area all the way to the tail here. So this area, in theory, goes all the way to infinity. There's no infinity button, but like I said before, you're going to hit 100, and that'll be big enough to get us an accurate answer. So this, as a decimal, gives you 0 0.008, so let's say 2. Okay. Now if you move the decimal two places, that tells you the percent. So I'm going to say, to interpret, about 0.82 percent of women are taller than 70.5 inches. Now that that makes sense because I mean 70.5 inches is actually pretty tall. I think I'm just doing it right now. It's like five, it's almost 5'11". So it makes sense that not many women are taller than 5'11", right? So the, the percentage of women taller than 5'11 should be, should be pretty small, given what we know about how female heights are distributed. But there's a couple of things to point out. One is that we've turned this question into percentage, right? 
which is we're familiar you know with thinking about percentages so that makes sense but you'll probably get to a point where you'll learn that whatever the context 2.4 standard deviations above the mean will always translate to 0.82 percent of the population so if i say you know this basketball player you know the number of, of points he's scored this season is is 2.4 standard deviations above the mean right then the percentage of players who scored you know that score or beyond is going to be 0.82 percent so the context doesn't matter once you know the number of standard deviations that will always translate into the same exact percentage in spite of the context okay and that that's that's what's making the normal model um, something we use all the time because it really does it gives us standard values and it translate it translates context into this model which is um, does a great job of providing consistency in terms of how we uh, how we analyze certain data that's that's symmetric and um, that has a distribution that's symmetric and mound shaped like this so we'll do a few more examples because there are a couple of nuances I think that I need to point out but um, this at least gives you uh, a few uh, a few skills that you're going to want to adopt in order to answer questions regarding the normal model.